All right, what's going on, everybody? Um, I hope everyone had a great Christmas. I did. I got a new guardian of the forge. <laughs> I, uh, I've always liked gargoyle statues, and I've always wanted one to put on the roof of the forge or outside the forge somewhere. So that was a cool gift. Um, but I wanted to make a video and just talk about some upcoming projects. Uh, it's just going to be me rambling. You know, probably be a lot longer video than I'd like, but oh well. But um, first off, I just want to show off this uh, integral kitchen knife. I made a bunch of these for Christmas gifts. This is the one I made my uh, my fiance. Um, we've been using it a lot since Christmas. It's starting to patina, as you can tell. And there's a little rust spot there, but that's why you got to take care of your carbon steel knives, people. But uh, yeah, these were a lot of fun to make. Um, I forged these out of a, a rail car spring from um, the Alaska Railroad. And I uh, just put it on an ash handle, burned it in, and then soaked it in some boiled linseed oil. But uh, yeah, these were a lot of fun. And then I want to show off this. It's not finished, but this is the Kumai blade I made. And I think it came out really cool looking. I am really hooked on, you know, non-ferrous metals, man. I want to do a lot more of this stuff. Um, I do plan on putting it on a, uh, on a, uh, copper Damascus guard, but I have to come back to this. That's the main reason I'm kind of showing it right now is because I, uh, I've got some other projects I need to work on stuff people have paid me for. So any personal stuff I kind of need to put aside. Um, but I will be doing a lot more Kumai, Ku, you know, Kumai Damascus. Like, you know, I, I want to do, you know, I, you know, I want to do more Kumai blades with, the cladding um damascus you know so and uh this was a uh, 15 and 20 on the outsides copper and then 1084 is the core um and also if you guys want to see a really awesome how-to video on kumai go check out uh dennis's channel um tyrell knifeworks uh he's got an awesome uh outstanding uh how-to video on uh doing a kumai blade um you know i just want to give him a big you know Thank you for uh, giving me a shout out, man. That was, that's really cool, dude. Like, I, I think it was awesome how, you know, we were kind of talking about, uh, you know, the whole, the whole process of doing this. So I just, I think that was really cool, you know, and I, I appreciate the shout out, man. And I'll be getting you a hammer, man. <laughs> so just be patient. <laughs> but, uh, so, um, I've got a, a couple axes I'll be making and I have a, uh, an axe I'm making for uh, the uh, um, Scottish clan gun commissioner of California. So it's pretty special to me because they're going to be displaying my axe at all the Highland games and in different events and stuff. So I'm, I'm super uh, excited to, to, to start that, that build. Um, it's going to involve one of these, some of this, and some of this. So I think you guys get the idea <laughs> of what that ax is gonna be. So I'm super excited to start that build. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of giving away what it's gonna be made out of now because uh, I'm not gonna do an intro for that video. I, I mean, I am gonna be, uh, you know, documenting the process of this ax, but I just don't want to do an intro. I kind of want to make it more of like a story uh, of, of the whole build. And I will be, uh, you know, filming the start to finish um, all the way to where I have a handle on it and I'm, and I'm holding the ax. Um, probably going to be in my uh, Gun Clan kilt. Um, haven't really decided if I want to uh, forge the ax out in my kilt because I really don't want to ruin it. It's a really nice, you know, uh, Gun Clan kilt. So I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, and then I got some other axes I'm going to be working on, um, uh, some folded style axes. Uh, I've got some wrought iron coming, so I'm going to be doing some, uh, folded style axes where the axe body is wrought iron and then you, you know, forge weld in the bit where you forge, you, you forge weld the eye and then the bit into it. Um, I'm going to be a, doing a few, uh, mild steel bodies too. Um, and I'll probably film those first because, uh, 
it's probably going to be a while before I get the wrought iron. So I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, you know, axes like that being forged where you're basically shaping the, the body of the axe out of a piece of bar, uh, flat bar, you know, and, and then you fold it over and, and weld it. Uh, it's a really fun process to do. I, I really love doing them like that. It's been a while since I've done one. Um, it's actually been two winters since I've, two years since I've done one. So, um, you know, I, I'm probably a little rusty, but you know, I, it, they're, they're really fun to do. It's a, it's a great, uh, it, it takes a lot of skill to, to make them. There's a lot of hammering involved. Everything I'm gonna be doing is gonna be by hand. I'm not gonna use the press to do any of the welds. It's all gonna be by hand. They're just a lot of fun to make, you know. Um, it's a good, like, exercise in forging, too, you know, because, like I said, there's a lot of hammering and making them. But, uh, so, yeah, that, that that's coming up. Um, I, I'm going to be doing, a, like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot more copper Damascus. Um, I got a couple sledgehammers I need to make. I'm going to be making a really large doghead style sledgehammer out of a large axle shaft, which I'll make a video on that, too. Um... I got some Damascus knives to make. Uh, what else? It's really all I can think of right now. Um, oh, and back to the, uh, the, the the Viking axe I'm making for the, the clan gun. Um, I'm keeping that axe uh, a little more traditional. It's not going to be hung on your standard axe handle. It's going to be on a, a straight handle. Uh, the eye will be an oval eye. I know most traditional Viking axes had a D-shaped eye, but... There are some uh, historically found axes with oval eyes. So I'm gonna be doing an oval eye just because I have the tooling to do it. I don't have, you know, a drift to make, you know, for a, for a D-shaped eye, which eventually I'll make my own drift to do that. But just, you know, with the tooling I have, that'll be fine. It's not gonna be extremely historically accurate. Um, I will be making the, the a, um, a type D style uh, axe, which is, most of my bearded Viking axes um, are are based off the Type D style, uh, you know, and you guys can Google that and see what it looks like. But you know, that's that's the kind of style of Viking axes that I make. So uh, you know, that's what I'm going to shoot for. And, and like I said, just hanging on a, on a straight handle. So that's what's uh, um, upcoming. Um, I also have. I have a bunch of steel I need to process to make Damascus billets out of. It's something I've been wanting to do is is prepping a bunch of Damascus billets. Um, just, you know, I don't have like a set uh, layer amount, but somewhere in the two to 300 layers, I'd like to have just a stack of, of billets ready to go for future, uh, for future knives when, you know, people, uh, want a Damascus blade. I've already got a billet ready to go and you, you know what I mean? I like, I don't have to, you know, forge it out so you know basically i'm just i would just be prepping for a uh, while i'm working you know I don't, I don't have to do all the forging of it i can still produce a damascus knife you know on the job site somewhere or when i don't have a lot of time to uh forge you know if that makes sense i already got the billet ready to go so all i gotta do is just you know stock remove a knife out of it or just forge the knife out grind it heat treat you know I, I can do all that stuff out there you know heat treat i still do here at home but that's you know simple um but other than that yeah that's uh that's all i can really think of right now um oh and i just wanted to uh you know i just wanted to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my channel everybody that you know takes the time to watch my videos and comment like that's just crazy to me. I, I never thought that I would have over a hundred subscribers. I mean, the fact that I have over 300 now is just, that's just crazy to me. I know that's a very small number compared to other guys' channels. Um, but still, I just think, I just think that's really cool. Uh, you know, I didn't, um, I, I didn't start making YouTube videos because, you know, I want subscribers, you know, that's not really the reason that I made YouTube videos. The reason I made YouTube videos was to just document the, the, the process I use and, and the things that I make, you know, that was the main reason. And, and to be able to hopefully in the future, look back on all of this, you know, and that's the main reason I, I started making videos. And, and also, uh, some customers, um, 
you know, items that I make, uh, it's nice for them to be able to go to YouTube and then, you know, look at uh, their knife or whatever being created. So I, that's another reason I like to make videos is, is just to be able to show somebody like, hey, this was, this is your knife and I, you know, that that's it being born basically, if that makes sense. So I, that's the other reason I made YouTube, but I mean, all kinds of things change. And you know, the, the other thing I really like about YouTube is the people that I've kind of connected with and, and have talked to, you know, like, uh, I just, I think that's awesome, man. Like talking to different people in parts of the planet and, you know, exchanging ideas and just, I feel like these people are like my friends, man. Like, like I've known them for years, you know, people in this community are just, are just awesome. And it's crazy, you know, I feel like, uh, like I said, I feel like I could just sit down with them and talk to them like I've known them for years, you know. I don't really have, I know of some people up here that, you know, like forging and stuff, but I don't really have any close friends that are into doing the stuff that I, that I like to do. So I'm basically just a loner in my, in this craft, <laughs> which is okay with me. I got no problem with that. But anyways, that's what's coming up. Um, I'm probably going to do a folded style ax first, uh, will be my next video. Um, and then I'm going to, you know, slowly start to, uh, um, compile footage and of everything of the, the Viking axe I'm going to be making. That's going to be a little slower process, but it's just going to be one, one video. And like I said, there's not going to be an intro or anything. That's why I kind of gave away what it's going to be made out of. I just, uh, I just want to film that as it's, as it's a story, you know, and not like one of my normal videos. So and another thing I forgot to mention, something that I did recently was uh, I made a proper anvil stand for my anvil. So, um, you know, it's just a three-legged uh, stand. Uh, I'll bring the camera down and show it. It's really nothing special. It's just your three-legged stand, but it's uh, no more. My anvil doesn't rock anymore, and it's it's amazing. Um, and I also siliconed the uh, the the anvil to the to the base. And man, it really, really did uh, dim the ring. Like there's almost no ring anymore. Um, the only thing I didn't do was fill the legs with sand. And that's because I'll end up doing that this summer. I've already put the holes in. I just got to, you know, take the anvil off. I'll have to re-silicone it and everything. But, you know, I, I get sand for free at work. So I'm not going to pay for sand right now. Uh, I'll just, like I said, I'll just take the anvil off, fill the legs full of sand this summer, silicone the anvil back onto the on the stand, but that's something that I did. You'll see it more in, in the videos, but I will insert a clip of it, showing it a little bit. Um, I do plan on uh, cutting some holes out or welding um, something out there to hold all my hardy tools. But uh, yeah, it's really nothing special, but and it sure makes a huge difference over that stump that I've been using. You know, the anvil doesn't rock or move. It's, it's amazing. All right, there's the anvil stand. It's uh, very simple in design, just like your average anvil stands you see. Um, the legs are uh, two and a half inch square tubing. And uh, the top plate is uh, just a piece of mild steel, three eighths thick. And then I just welded around some flat bar to keep it from sliding around. And I did uh, silicone the base, but it's really nice. It's uh doesn't rock like that stump did, but yep, that's it. So that's what's coming up. And again, I, I appreciate everybody for watching. Um, I hope everybody has a great new year and y'all have a great day.